All right, so um, downstroke is when the arm goes down, obviously. That's the symbol, uh, the old school symbol for it. They use a different one in uh, tablature. It's an arrow, but don't worry about it. And this is an upstroke of E. Arm comes up. Now, this is duple strumming. Here we got four beats in a measure. One, two, three, four. And we have two actions per beat, which makes it duple. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If I were to miss say this stroke and uh, this stroke if I were to eliminate those I'd get da 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 make sense? Mm -hmm. da 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 if I'm missing here and here for this I get a sound that goes across these two because I'm missing the strings on this one da right? right. da 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 all right, so clearly how you create rhythm through the constant motion of up and down is simply when you miss the strings. So, uh, and the beauty is there's no correct strum necessarily. There's no cor correct strum. All right, so okay. in other words, let me explain what I mean by that, and then we'll go into quadruple. Um, let's say, all right. The reason there's no correct strum, if you follow this principle of constant down up and missing the strings at a certain point, you'll come up with a rhythm that fits inside 4-4 four, four time whether, it's, whether or not it's the original strum I just showed you. But let's say, you know, you have a song that's going... Good Rhythms by Green Day. Now let's say I screw up the rhythm. Right. Or if you were, were the Ramones, you would only use hit strings on downstrokes. Right. And I was going to talk about that, actually. That's okay. rock and roll strumming. I mean, I could go like this. Or I could go. But there's something about that constant cutting on a downstroke that creates that rock uh, urgency. Okay. You know, that push. And that's why I want to be sedated, which is also a 1 4 5, by the way. Okay. Now let's go. I wanna be sedated. Oh no, it's a one four one. Alright, right. so one four one. Could we mention a few other people, uh Richie Havens, who because of an accident, car accident or something, his hand he could he had to resort to just learning strums. Because he, he couldn't finger pick anymore. Right, 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 oh. right. And also, what Pete Townsend is also quite proficient at at strums, different strums, yeah, I believe. Yeah, could do a full body strum. Well, but I mean, <laughs> it, 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 the rhythmic, I mean, things you can really hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I discovered is is you can be like born with rhythmic talent, or, or mm -hmm. you have to learn it. But I do really feel it's learnable. Okay. Um, a lot of white people have a problem with it, believe it or not. Mm. Like it's, it's kind of this thing. Like if you look at African culture, rhythm is ju they're just steeped in rhythm. I mean, yeah. that's, that, that's like it's the fabric of their society. But white people, rhythm was always like kind of secondary to music. Where oh. In African culture, it was, it was primary, you know. Uh, and uh, so white people have this tendency to really kind of get things wrong and... Uh, Again, it's like uh, what we were discussing before. Like uh, somebody did this just the other night when I was perform, just the other day when I was performing. White people tend to accent one and three uh, of a measure: one, two, three, four. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Where in the in the tradition of jazz and blues, the African culture brought us the accent on two and four, and that was brand new. Could you just go ahead and slap your knee so we can hear it on one and three? Okay. So it's like one, two. Three, four. All right, that's the way white people clap at concerts. You hear it all the time. Okay. All right, now we're, what we're going to do is two and four. Okay. One, two, three, four. And what that does is it brings an immediate swing mm -hmm. into it. It's very subtle because it's stretched out. Uh, you know, like swing actually happens between eighth notes or 
sixteenth notes, not so much quarter, but the basis of swing is two and four. It's the, that feeling. It it starts to rock your body a little bit. Okay. You, did you feel the difference? Oh yeah, you, right? yeah, very much. That's that's a that's a big thing. I always laugh when I, I hear white people clapping at concerts. Uh. It's always one and three, and it just sounds so dorky in comparison. Uh, all right, so that's kind of a side trip. Uh, now, so we have the duple strumming one. Let me slow down the tempo so I can demonstrate both. One, two, three, four is duple. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Quadruple allows for four strums. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. These are sixteenth notes, and this is what. Um, this is what really you get the syncopation from. It's in sixteenth notes. That's where the syncopation in funk is really, really rooted in, in the sixteenth notes. Is there some? Can you just play a short little bit of funk uh, that would uh, well, showcase that? Well, yeah. Uh, um, this is going to get into another area of muting uh, in a second. But like, uh, say, disco style from the seventies. Now we have one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, right? Right. One, two, three, four. This is what's going on in my right hand. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Right. Right. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, three, four. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, in 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 uh, in school they teach you to count instead of one, two, three, four. Two, two they say one and a two and a because it flows off. Oh, okay. Easily. So. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two. So that's an example of quadruple strum, but I also said that's a little frantic because mm -hmm. the, the meter is a little on the uppest side. It's a little like a little past medium. So uh, let's see how it works in ballads. Okay, a uh, good example I always give right off the in my handy example is, uh, and, but there's a million of them, is uh, Day in a Life. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's like we got a one, two, three, four. Right. So. That's what my hand is doing, all right? You know, you'll you'll hear that in all their ballads. You know, if you hear something this slow, one, two, three, four, and you do duple, it sounds it tends to sound a little dirge-like. It yeah. doesn't have any push or, you know, which motivation. may serve a, may serve a certain song Absolutely. right. Absolutely, I know. always say, you know, there's there's no ultimate rule in regards to rhythm, harmony, yeah. or anything. It depends on your artistic taste and what you want to express. Well, through. in a lot of cases, the Beatles we've been studying would, you know, break the rules. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, but the, you know, again, you know, it's it, it's connected somehow with that ineffable thing called aesthetics, and mm. you know, how do you make something that that really touches somebody, you know? And some people write really bad music, you know, they make bad choices, it happens, you know. Uh, so there's a, the, you know, how do you, you know, how do you say what's good or what's bad? Something pleases, something doesn't please for yeah. some reason. And of course taste, uh, you know, moves no. from person to person in different ways. I have no taste for accounting. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, all right, now, uh, another thing to consider in strumming, all right, that was a quadruple strum. The exercise I like to give, if you want to test yourself, guys out there, use a bar chord, because muting, muting uh, happens really easily with bar chords. Okay. And this will be a good flow into the subject of muting, by the way. But the, what I always teach is the Bo Did, what's called the Bo Diddley rhythm comes out of New Orleans. This is a way to teach yourself. It's kind of like learning how to do this. Okay. You know, you have to learn how to tap your foot and do this rhythm. Ain't easy. Two, three, four. All right, so that's like. Now, what's going on, I could be doing this, but it's when I actually take my left hand and, and raise it off the strings 
that creates the rhythm. This keeps going. Okay. So really, it's the application of pressure in the left hand. Right. That is really you're not you're not making any stress any different stress movements in the right hand at all. Right. Right. Okay. In the case of the the cowboy using cowboy chords mm -hmm. and you and doing the uh, universal strum, I called it. There is no muting going on. It's just I'm in that case I'm missing the strings to create the solos. Right. In the case of funk, it's nice to actually hear the in between because it gives it like a rhythmic oh, yeah. thing, you know. And you could hear Hendrix do this, you know, even though he wasn't really playing funk, but sure. you know, you could hear him do that kind of scratching thing. Yeah, there's a propulsive sense to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah.